As the world stumbles into endless wars, China is creating a new type of militia. They're armed to the teeth. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. You know, people say that those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. I think Xi Jinping heard that and took the wrong lesson, because he may be sending China right back to the Cultural Revolution. You see, China is descending into chaos right now. The economy is stagnating. There's record high numbers of unemployed youth, and a meltdown in the housing market, which makes up about a third of China's economy. The Communist Party is worried about people taking their anger out on the government, like they did during China's draconian COVID lockdowns. That's why Xi Jinping is warning Chinese people to prepare for extreme scenarios. And he's about to bring one of those extreme scenarios himself. China is weaponizing its government-run businesses. Yes, the CCP is literally putting army-linked militias into state-owned enterprises. Before I go on, are you a professional video editor with a good grasp of Photoshop and After Effects who loves gaming? Then I have an exciting opportunity for you. I'm looking for a video editor for my new show, Deep Thoughts While Gaming. You can see it over at my new channel, Gamers Unbeaten. If you're interested, send a resume, CV, and portfolio with some samples of your work to gamersunbeaten at gmail.com. But hurry, applications close October 31st. So if you're watching this in the future, past that date, what are you doing? Go over to Gamers Unbeaten and watch all the great Deep Thoughts While Gaming. So as I mentioned, China is arming its government-run companies. Big Chinese state-owned enterprises are setting up army-linked militias, which, according to the China Maritime Studies Institute Center for Naval Warfare, are there to support national defense efforts. However, the institute also says they can be called on to provide a ready source of manpower for local governments in times of emergencies, such as natural disasters, law enforcement, and search and rescue efforts. Yes, that's right, they can also be called on to do law enforcement. Now, this is significant for a few reasons. First of all, these militias have been around for decades, but until recently, they were on the decline. According to Radio Free Asia, after decades of relative invisibility throughout the post-Mao economic boom, they are once more mobilizing to build militias in big state-owned companies and consolidate party leadership over local military operations. This is happening at the same time that Xi Jinping is promoting what's called the Feng Chao model. Feng Chao is a city in Zhejiang province. The Feng Chao model refers to a 1960s campaign under Mao to purge the four reactionary elements of landlords, wealthy peasants, counter-revolutionaries, and evildoers. It basically sets the table for the type of vigilantism that mobilized the masses to struggle against the party's perceived enemies in the 1960s. Today, the Chinese Communist Party likes to frame it as the people resolving social disputes without having to get higher authorities involved, which is the prettiest definition of vigilantism I've ever heard. But as The Economist points out, the larger campaign resulted in tens of thousands of deaths and was a precursor to the horrors of the Cultural Revolution. So going back to these militias being set up inside state-owned companies, People are worried that Xi Jinping is preparing to unleash the horrors of the Cultural Revolution again. Local control is how all authoritarian systems perpetuate themselves, communism being no exception. During the 1960s in China, ordinary people were encouraged to name and shame anyone they deemed ideologically suspicious. And who would you report your neighbors to? Why, a militia inside your local state-owned company would be quite convenient. Further state-run Qiangjiang Daily newspaper reported that the department at the Wuhan Agricultural Group would be tasked with cultivating a spirit of unity, cooperation, and tenacious struggle among employees, as well as improving their political literacy. Don't turn around, the commissar's in town. Again, just a little joke for all our viewers who remember the 80s. Last month, the Shanghai Municipal Investment Group was the latest to set up a new People's Armed Forces Department. The announcement sparked considerable online debate about the purpose of the move, with some comments calling it a corporate militia, others suggesting it means the government is readying cities on its eastern seaboard for war, and others saying it could mean the authorities are anticipating mass popular unrest in connection with unfinished real estate projects. Adding to those fears are videos like this that have been making the rounds on social media. 
These are all students at Chuxiong Normal University in Yunnan province. Last month, they held this training exercise on how to take down protests. You can see that some of them are dressed up as the Chinese People's Armed Police Force, which is China's paramilitary force that mostly deals with domestic unrest. The protesters in the exercise are migrant workers who are demanding unpaid wages. As you can imagine, the armed police force was successful at subduing the protest. Although I have to say, it didn't look like the protesters were trying very hard. Throwing pieces of paper and then running away isn't a terribly realistic dramatization when real protests in China look more like this. See? Bottles, not paper. Get it right, reenactors. But Xi Jinping's state-owned business militias could definitely make it a lot harder for even real protesters to succeed. And it makes you wonder what Xi Jinping is planning. But I'll tell you what I'm planning. To cover it all. But I need your help. China Uncensored only exists because of support from viewers like you. Join what I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army over on patreon.com slash China Uncensored. All it takes is a dollar. You'll also get a bunch of cool perks, including the chance to ask me questions I'll answer on the show. And today's question comes from David Michael White. Chris, do you have any spooktacular plans for Halloween? You know, I'm glad you asked, David, because it gives me a chance to share with everyone my favorite Halloween tradition, which I hope you'll all join me in. And that's reading the fantastic book, A Night in Lonesome October. Each day of the month of October is a chapter. So on October 1st, I read the October 1st chapter. On the 2nd, I read the 2nd. And it all builds up to an insane Lovecraftian conclusion on Halloween. We're already a bit into the month, so I hope you all catch up and join me. And if you do, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for your question and your support, David. And if you want to join David in making the show possible, click on that orange button. And if you want to learn about what it looks like when powerful companies have their own militias, look no further than this Deep Thoughts While Gaming about the Shinra Corporation in Final Fantasy VII. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.